Hey folks, welcome along to Colour Fundamentals Part 4, RGB versus CMYK. Hey folks, and thanks for joining me in this fourth part of my Colour Fundamentals series. Today we're going to talk about RGB colour model versus the CMYK colour model because those are the two models that you will use most when you're doing any design work or when you're speaking to your graphic designer. I'm going to start off today by talking about the CMYK colour model. Now this is what's known as a subtractive model or a reflected light colour model. And the reason for that is that we start off with a white page and as we add ink to the page, it gets darker and the more ink you add, it will eventually get to black. Now, CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow and black. Now, the reason the black has a letter K is that comes from uh, old printing terms where K would be the key plate and that would have all the details and information of the job at hand. So K represents black in this color model. And next up, we've got the RGB color model, which is what's known as an additive model. And unlike CMYK, when you add the colors of the RGB model, red, green, and blue, and overlay those, you get white. With RGB, you'll be using that for any designs that you will be viewing on a screen. And that could be a laptop screen, a desktop computer, your phone, a television, anything that's projecting light onto the screen will use the RGB color model. So CMYK, subtract, add the colors, you get black. RGB additive, add the colors, you get white. RGB has a much wider color range than CMYK, and that's what's known as the color gamut. Now, when you are going to be creating a piece of artwork, you need to, in your head, understand where that's going to be seen. If it's purely going to be for on-screen use, then you design your artwork using the RGB color model. But if you're going to be doing something that maybe for on-screen and printed or solely printed, then you need to use the CMYK color model. And the reason for that is, as I've explained, RGB has a much wider color range. So if you were to design something in the RGB mode uh, that had, say, bright oranges or bright greens, if you then transferred that over to the CMYK color model, it will actually mute down the colors that you have. I can explain that through this visual here. As you can see on the left hand side, we've got a spectrum of color in the RGB color mode. And on the right hand side, we've got the CMYK version of that spectrum. You can quite clearly see that the CMYK can't replicate the brightness of the RGB. It's much more muted. So if you had some graphics or a design created for your website or social media platforms that say used a key color, a key bright orange, and you decided, yeah, I'm gonna print some flyers or I want to have that on my business cards, you'd get a shock when the cards or flyers arrived in the post because the orange would look really muddy in comparison to the one that you have on screen. Now, you're probably asking yourselves, well, I want that bright color. How do I get that bright color onto my printed materials? Well, there is a way to do that, and it's through using what's known as spot colors. And you print spot colors using Pantone inks. But we're not gonna talk about that today. That's for the next video in the Color Fundamental series. I hope you liked the video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up on my YouTube page. If you have any questions about RGB or CMYK, leave them in the comment section on my YouTube page and I will definitely answer those for you. And if you wanna be part of the Stay Creative team, make sure you subscribe to my channel. So until next time, where we'll be talking about Pantone, stay creative.